Hello, 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 and welcome to Dictate Your Joy's first ever podcast with me, Nina Marie. This is episode one, The Just Us System is the title of this episode. And I wanted this to be my first episode because it's, as, I, as I'm recording this, it's Mother's Day weekend 2021. And a year ago, Mother's Day weekend 2020, I was led to share a poem uh, called He Can't Hear Me, which was inspired by uh, the emotions and fear that my son lives with um, being, being a black boy in America. And so a lot of things have happened in 2020. It's been a very stressful and emotional year, and I just felt uh, compelled that this should be my first episode, so I do hope you enjoy it. It's really just going to be a collection of words and thoughts and feelings that have been heavy on my mind this past year, things that I've written, um, different things that I've written throughout the year and that I thought I would share with you and maybe you would find comforting, maybe they empower you, maybe you'll understand them and just felt heard and felt understood and feel less alone in how you're feeling. Um, and I do want to wish all the mothers out there happy Mother's Day. And I do, ha- I do hope you have a beautiful and blessed day, uh, no matter what you're doing. So let's get into it. This is something I wrote not too long ago when my daughter woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't go back to sleep. Uh, in the morning, this is what came to me. Have you ever had to comfort your children in the middle of the night after they've been woken up by a nightmare? Were you able to get get them back to sleep because you could reassure them that monsters or vampires or whatever they think is under their bed, they aren't real and they don't exist? Didn't that make you feel good? Feel good because you were able to soothe them and reassure them with logic that everything was going to be okay. Now think about when a black or brown mother is woken up in the middle of the night because her children had a nightmare. That the police or who that the police who are supposed to protect and serve had shot them in the back or kill, killed their aunt or their friend in her home in the middle of the night or chased and shot their cousin while he was out jogging in broad daylight or kneeling on kneeling on their father's neck for eight minutes until he died seemingly without remorse and a bit proud in fact or being shot while playing in the park all alone with their toy gun or they dreamt about their older brother being shot while trying to walk into his home with his subway sandwich. Or, or, or. Sadly, the list of how your children might wake up scared goes on and on. But in those cases, you can't soothe them or comfort them with logic that these things don't exist. Because they do. Sadly, horribly, they do. Mommy, they hate me. They fear me. But they don't even know me. And I don't even know them. Why, mommy? Why do they hate me? Why, when they're supposed to protect me, do they do these things? When they're supposed to protect us, mommy? Why, mommy? Why? And unfortunately, I don't have any good answers for them. I mean, I have those same nightmares myself. So all I can do is love on them, hug them, and hope that my love is soothing enough to have them fall back to sleep. And it comforts them enough to know that they are okay. Now, my next writing is actually what inspired the title, The Just Us System, of this episode. So again, here we go. Trust the justice system, they say. But what they won't say, or what they don't say, or turn a blind eye to, is it? it's the just us system, not the justice system. And the black and the brown, especially the men, are not a part of the just us system. The us are those that are rich and are white. The system doesn't care if it's wrong or it's right. Just us was born from slavery. The system born of hatred, sin, and greed. The 13th Amendment passed by Congress on January 31st, 1865 and ratified on December 6th, 1865, abolished slavery in the United States and provides that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States. Duly meaning justly convicted, justly only for the us. 
The end of slavery birthed a growth in unduly convictions. Unduly convictions birthed a $5 billion industry. Billion. Numbers over names. Names make us human. Numbers equal money. Money overrides morality. Morality defined as principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. The matter boiled down to simple morality. Innocent prisoners ought to be freed. There are approximately 2.4 million people in prison in the United States. Approximately 120,000 are innocent. Numbers over names. Names make us human. Na numbers equal money. Money overrides morality. Say his name. Say her name. Say our names make us human. Make us human. Make us human. Is that such a hard ask? Really? Is that such a hard ask? Think about that. Now what else I wrote um, is this. Yes, 2020 has been difficult, but not because of the shocking racial inequality. Um, hello, this is not new news, nor is it fake news. The pandemic of racial injustice, white privilege, and hate has plagued this country, the world, for hundreds of years. The COVID-19 shutdown actually gave people time to sit down and open their eyes, which I'm praying leads to them opening their hearts. Things must change, people. This is not an option. Keep your eyes open and go out and vote at all levels. This country is built on a foundation of racism, and it must be crumbled. This is not something that ju can just be tweaked. No, the system needs to be rebuilt. For growth to occur and be sustainable, the foundation has to be strong, has to be built from, the, from equality, from love, from truth, and justice, true justice for all. Now, this is something else I wrote when I thought Trump might be reelected. And I actually had a nightmare about this, that Trump was reelected. That's powerful that it's so deep within me and that fear. And I, I wouldn't have been shocked, but I would have been disappointed. Now, this is this is what I wrote. I am highly disappointed, but not surprised. I am disheartened, but not shocked. Above above all else, I will stay the course. I will remain encouraged and I will continue to educate myself, my family, and my community about the importance of voting in all elections. The disease that is racism, our sick and di disgusting justice system, our failing educational system cannot and will not be cured or healed swiftly. We must continue to fight. We must continue to fight for our grandchildren, excuse me, for our children, our grandchildren, for our ancestors, for those that fought before us, for Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, George Floyd, Emmett Till, Megger Evers, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, on and on and on. And we must fight for ourselves. This doesn't mean stop that Trump was reelected. This means go harder, go stronger, go wiser. Yes, it's hurt. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it's tiring. It's okay to cry and yell and cry and yell and pray and shout. Keep your eyes open. Do not turn your back or throw up your hands. No waving the white flag. Keep your fist in the air, knee on the ground, and continue to have the audacity to hope. Shout out to Barack Obama, the audacity to hope. Now, this portion goes out to those Caucasian allies or those who want to be allies. This is what I wrote. You believe you are not racist because you have black or brown friends or maybe even have people of color in your family and you haven't quote unquote intentionally hurt anyone of color. However, your inactions are hurtful. You not wanting to really change the system because white privilege has served you is serving you or will serve your family is hurtful. So you throw the hashtag BLM on your social media accounts or you like or repost Black Lives Matter <coughs> quotes and posts. 
Not using your own voice speaks volumes. Not using your privilege for good hurts. So how can you be an ally? Learn and teach so we, we can stop this cycle. It's time that you have the tough conversations. They must be had. We have them with our children. And to truly be an ally, you have to have them with yours. You have to have the conversation that white privilege, privilege does exist, racism, social injustice, systematic racism, police brutality, all these things that we wish didn't exist, they do. And they haven't, they've always have, have these tough conversations. Learn and teach so we, we can stop this cycle. Now I want to finish up this episode one of Dictate Your Joy's first podcast ever um, by sharing the poem, He Can't Hear Me, which I wrote last Mother's Day weekend, Mother's Day weekend 2020. He can't hear me. My words of love, my words of affirmation, my compliments on his beauty all go unheard. The reality is he is so beautiful. He is smart. He is kind. He is funny. He is creative and unique. But he can't hear me, nor does he believe me. I'm not unique, he responds. I'm a black boy who prays he will become a black man in a world that doesn't love or respect my life. In a world where my life is under undervalued and doesn't matter. Better yet, I'm a black boy who prays to be white. Who prays to be safe and not riddled with fear of walking or driving or just being myself. This breaks my heart and infuriates me that in one breath I'm trying to educate my son on how amazing he is and how much pride he should have in just being who he is, an intelligent, loving, wonderful person. And in the next breath or lesson, I must educate him on how to move in a world so scary and so unjust. To teach him how to make it home safely when he's done nothing wrong, but the color of his skin automatically makes him scary, automatically makes him guilty. He can't hear me. He can't hear me through our history of slavery and oppression. He can't hear me through all the black lives lost, men, women, and children at the hands of a white person or the police. He can't hear me say, call 911 for help or treat all your friends from diverse backgrounds equally. He can't hear me over the news. He can't hear me over the president. My son can't hear me over his fear and I can't seem to love him loud enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you for spending your precious time with me and listening to me and being present with me and and experiencing this podcast life with me on episode one. I will continue to create more episodes and I will continue to be vulnerable and honest and sharing on all my platforms. I do invite you to follow me, subscribe, like, share, comment, just be in on this journey with me and check out my YouTube channel and my Instagram and Facebook pages and be on alert for my new post and 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 just enjoy life with me and continue to dictate your joy. Be well, be happy, have a great day on purpose and happy Mother's Day. Peace.